It happens every spring in some big American city. This year, it's Pittsburgh. Over 1,700 students from around the world are here awesome. to compete in the International Science and Engineering Fair. It wasn't always this big. The first science fair was in New York City in 1928 at the American Museum of Natural History. Most of the students' projects were simple demonstrations of scientific principles. By 1950, the idea had grown into a national competition to identify America's top young scientists. In the category, Environmental Engineering from Friendswood, Texas, Karan Jarrett. At today's awards ceremony, they're handing out more than $5 million in scholarships and prizes. All of the finalists competing here started back home at their local science fair and then won their state or regional competition. They are the best of the best. Three of them are from schools in Northwest Arkansas, my home state. You gotta earn it. These schools take science fair very seriously. What we're gonna show you here is the pathway of the steps that will enable you to put yourself in the position to be successful and possibly go there. At my school, we have to do a science fair project. It's part of our grade. How many of you would do a science fair project if we didn't make it? Pretty much. Yeah, we're not all crazy about it. It's a lot of work for everyone. But our teachers believe it's important. Like it or not, when it comes to learning science, we don't just talk about it, we do it. The three schools in this story are different in many ways, but they have one thing in common. They are fierce competitors in science fair. One of them is here, where I am a student, at Alpena High School. It's pretty small. We have about 200 students in grades seven through 12. And the high school sits right next to the middle and the elementary schools. Many of the students live on farms outside of town. We all know each other. Most of us have done a science fair project every year since the fifth grade. There's a hallway covered with plaques and awards that serves as a daily reminder of Alpine's tradition in science fair competitions. We've been referred to as the Hicks from the Sticks in the past because we're the little school. But we're the little school with a big bark and a big bite when it comes to science fair. And it makes people proud of the community. I know there are people that drive through and they have to think how in the world do these kids from this little wide spot in the road do what they do. You know that a lot of kids, evidence in the hallway, have had a lot of success at this. And you probably in your mind wonder how did they do that? Mr. Welch is the teacher who brought Science Fair to Alpena 18 years ago. He gets us thinking about it the first week of school. You can't eat this steak all in one bite. You've got to cut it up into little pieces or the children will be overwhelmed. And so what we do is we basically break it into several components throughout the year so that they can hit benchmarks at the right time. Do you remember what your job is? What is that? What's your job? To make your grades, right? To make your grades. This is a part of making that grade. He also gives us a little extra motivation. So if your job is to make grades, because that's an important thing, can that calculate out into money sometime? Since 2001, since those first two girls right there have gone to ICF, I can tell you the number of students that have earned academic full scholarships to Division I universities from our school, and the number is 18. Can you name 
a single child from Alpena that has gone on a Division I scholarship for playing any kind of sport. Can you name one? Exactly. No, these aren't the Alpena Leopards. We don't have enough students to fill the football team. These are the Airedales from Alma, Arkansas. I'm not sure how they do in football, but I know they rock in science fair. They have around 1,000 students, and like Alpena, most of their science classes require a science fair project. Have we had somebody from Alma to go to internationals before? Yes, can it happen? Yes, it can. They also get pep talk at the beginning of the year. It's a great opportunity for you, and I don't want you to go into it thinking, oh my gosh, why do I have to do this? I want you to, to think, this is a worthwhile, yes, it's a lot of work, I'm not gonna lie to you. Yes, I have high expectations, I expect you to do really well. Yes, I'm competitive, and I hope you're competitive too. So, how many of you have your topic already? Raise your hand if you know what you're going to be doing for science fair. Coming up with an idea is very difficult. These students don't have a lot of experience with research, with scientific research, experiments. They don't have a clue what to do. Is there any certain category that you like to do or? Uh, sports. You like sports. Uh, we try to come up with something together, something that they will find valuable and fun and will get them hooked. Because I want them to love science fair and love science and research. Yeah, that's fine. Does that sound good? Sound fun? Okay. All right. I guarantee you, by the time the regional science fair rolls around, these guys from Alma will be ready. And then there's one other school that has recently become a serious contender at the regional science fair. Someone told me they were ranked the number one high school in the state. Haas Hall Academy is a public charter school in Fayetteville, Arkansas. We have 320 scholars, uh, 8 through 12. When you first walk in, you'll usually see a banner that says expect to learn. And so right away, they're shown that uh, we're all about learning. Science fair, you're finding schools that uh, don't want to put in the effort and the time to do it, and they're, it's falling by the wayside. So we here at Haas Hall, because we're known as math and science school, decided that this was something that we really wanted to focus on and that it was important. How are you coming with your three topics for your science fair? Well, I think I came up with my ideas because I just thought about things that really matter to me and like do things that could help. I love that you said that, Natalie. Science fair is not just we, we can do this experiment, but why are we doing it? So we required it in eighth grade, and then we also decided to require it in our biology class. Um, most of you rocked out your bibliography, which always makes me very happy. It's a lot of uh, critical thinking, applied learning, not just book smarts. Okay, so as it stands now, if, if I wrote on your paper, come talk to me, I don't quite understand what you're doing, you're not ready to start. You have to go into the literature. You have to see what other people are doing so you can compare your results to what someone else did. If you're doing something with human behavior, you could do the psychology journal. And through that whole process, I try and walk, walk them through that and tell them that this is not busy work. This is not something I'm gonna have you do because I can. It's because this is what real scientists do. So we're still at the preliminary stages, but you understand the expectations. The expectations are the same for all of us. It's time to write the research plan, which will include the purpose of your project, a list of the materials you need, and a detailed description of how you plan to do it. That's when they find out if it's doable. Is this possible? Is this realistic? Because sometimes they really want to do exciting things, but we may not have the equipment or the expertise to do that. I like to think of the experimentation phase of the process as a tunnel. What you usually see is the students, they will stall as long as they can before they will go into the tunnel. Well, they actually start experimenting. You actually sometimes have to shove them in there. So, here we are in the tunnel. Mr. Welch is right. It does feel like you're in the dark when you start your project. 
Let's meet some of my fellow science fair explorers. Well, my name is Javian Walter. I'm in the ninth grade and it's my first year doing a science fair project ever. I've always been interested in radiation because you know it's just a little bit dangerous. I watched a video online about a boy scout who actually built his own Geiger counter and I thought I could do that. I'm concerned about the radiation that comes from electronic devices because people don't typically think about uh, that a microwave could be dangerous, but it is a level of radiation. Radiation is just a high end frequency wave on the electromagnetic spectrum okay. and microwaves provide that, so do cell phones, so do computers and I'm concerned about that. They could hurt people. The reading that's given from the meter that I made is so minute that it's barely measurable. So for that reason I'm going to need an actual scientifically made Geiger counter. Even though we already have Geiger counters, uh, he was trying to create one with what he had available to him. This is how discovery starts. When he told me he found a radioactive plate, I got a little nervous. Oh, wow. Now that is powerful. Taylor, she likes microbiology projects. She's testing gloves to see if different substances would break down gloves because everyone thinks they're so sanitary. All the doctors go through and they always get the Germex right before they always wash their hands and then they put the gloves on. Well, if that doesn't dry completely, it can deteriorate the glove. And so I just had a surgery and so it relates back to me a lot. We're gonna take three different gloves, a powder glove, a latex glove, and a non-latex glove, and take antibacterial soap, a Germex, and then just a regular like Dawn dish soap and we're going to pour a little bit in each. See if it like deteriorates any, like if it lets anything through where there's bacteria. Last year, after seeing some of my friends get to go to nationals, I went to Mr. Welch and I said, I want to be able to do that. I want a project that will get me there. We came across a study that had been done with feeding rats blueberries. There's a component in blueberries that is supposed to work with vitamin D to increase the immune system's responses. And we thought, well, you know, what, how could we take this and expand on it and make it different? And with chickens, um, it has a very real world application because chickens in their poultry houses and stuff go undergo a lot of stress. I, I came down and I had a panic attack. Okay. Because I was like down here by myself and All right. I just like, I couldn't, I didn't feel like I could do anything with them. You were overwhelmed. Yes. Okay, all right. So to all of a sudden be responsible for 25 chickens is very um, eye-opening, <laughs> you know. You're in the last part, in the most labor-intensive part. Yeah. If you can push through this, and I think you can, you seem more cheerful today. You're going to move these guys one by one and put them in those cages over there. Right, so we need to get more water. Yeah, you're going to need some assistance. I'll send Levi down, okay. all right? Okay, and I may send somebody else down too, okay. okay? We are, in a way, all competing against each other. But even more than that, we want to see our classmates succeed. I think that's the mindset a lot of us have. Ow! We moved 18 of the chickens uh, to the individual batteries, made sure that each one had the same amount of food and water. Easy, buddy. He's quiet. Yeah. There's a control group, and they're just getting just plain uh, water and food. Then there's the vitamin D group, and then there is the blueberry vitamin D group. So I'll be doing that for about a week and seeing how, how much they're eating changes and then how much the ammonia changes. Ammonia is what's given off in chicken waste and it's what makes it smell. But it's also very detrimental to the chicken's health and it's not really good for humans either. And so finding a way to lower the ammonia levels in chicken houses is going to be better for the chickens and better for the farmers. Sophie was looking at how does garbage decompose. And in particular, she was looking at different types of paper. And I'm trying to see what will help decompose the paper quicker. Earthworms or organic waste or just regular soil. I'd already been thinking about like what, what could I do to make this different and better. 
and how could it better help society? Sophie decided, I, I need to go see a landfill. I need to see how this is applied. But you can see over here, Sophie, this is our class four landfill. I learned how important they are. You know, everyone thinks they're gross. I think they're gross, but they're important. It's, it's like you cut your waste in half. Wow. And if everybody did that, that'd be amazing. It's really expensive to build it. I mean, I just thought they dug a hole and that was your landfill. So here we have, under a few inches of soil, a plastic tub, and it's got soil, my paper samples, and this particular one has earthworms in it. I'm gonna dig it up. It's not always fun. I'm gonna take the tub out. I'm gonna go through and find the paper. I'm gonna let it sit overnight just to get some moisture out. There's one of them. And then I'm gonna weigh it. These tubs are made of plastic. And when I went to the landfill, I found out that they have like a thick plastic liner under them. So in a way, this kind of represents a landfill. We have a limited time left in our landfill. And so if we can try and find something that'll help decompose the paper and trash quicker, then that'd be great. Zane Halsey, he's doing a really interesting uh, nematode study. Uh, nematodes being a sentinel species for pollutants. And we deal with pollutants here on the ground from chicken litter spreading. Mr. Welch hit me one time with the uh, idea and he uh, asked me about doing a study of nematodes. I didn't know what nematodes were. It's basically a uh, microscopic worm in the soil. He, he worked with me, we you know, kind of came up with like a mutual question. Does poultry litter have an effect on the nematode population in fields? I was born and raised on a farm. We have four turkey houses and about 50 cows. We have a litter truck and it has a conveyor belt. It's basically a big dump truck and it's got two rotating devices on the back that slings the litter and it takes on that conveyor belt and just drive around and it slings the litter out all over the land. The hillsides that have been littered are a whole lot greener than other hillsides that haven't. Everybody's always talking about, oh, poultry litter hurts the land, poultry litter does this, that. I just really wanted, you know, to test and see if it did have an effect on the nematode population. And so I selected two hillsides with a cross fence on them, and half of the hillside was littered and half of it wasn't, and I took samples on each side of the fence and compared the samples. It'd be really cool, we could, you know, get in touch with a, a couple professors at the U of A and ask me, you know, we emailed the professors back and forth and I went over there and got to work with them. Now, just remember, keep tapping and pour a kind of uniform rate. Took all the samples over there and we screened them out and just had the nematodes in some water. It's a lot of nematodes. Well, that's really not very many. <laughs> It was amazing, like all the equipment they had, and it was just mind-blowing, the amount of knowledge everybody had. We looked under the microscope at a couple of samples, but I left the samples with Dr. Robin, and he had, like, evaluated them and sent the results back. Whatever the results are, I don't want to go spread waste and kill the environment in 20 years not have anything to feed cows. This data supported that nothing was harming the nematodes, so maybe we're actually doing something good. Lucinda, she did a science fair project last year and she did not win. And instead of that experience causing her to decide not to do it again, she was just even more motivated to do a science fair project. I was asking Ms. McGulloch about what I should look at for my science for projects and she said look for what you're interested in and my Nana has for a long time taught me how to sew and I make my own dresses sometimes and so I thought it'd be very interesting to do something with fabric. Can you call out the colors mom? And I'll mm -hmm. Solid purple. I am looking at the effect of fabric softener on the flammability of different fabric types Pink. basically seeing if what fabric softener you wash it in makes it more flammable or less flammable. I'm testing three different fabric softeners on ten different fabrics I think the fabrics with the fabric softener will burn much faster than the ones without it. One, two, one, two, three. 
Yes, you want to burn from this. Side. I have this thing I've constructed. I call it a burning apparatus. It's basically some pieces of wood with a clothespin on it to hang the fabric from. One, two, one, two, three. After I'm done with it burning, it cooling, I will then measure how much fabric has burned off. And then I'll be able to compare how much fabric burns off in the same amount of time to see which one burns faster. I think it definitely burned more than this one. Going through the scientific process and being able to see it in action as opposed to just mark it down as answers on a test, I think is really interesting being able to, I, I knew how to compose an experiment, but how to actually compose it and do it. There was no fabric softener that came out showing that it burnt more. There were definitely fabrics that burned more than others, but no fabric softeners. And there wasn't one that the control group, which didn't have any fabric softener on it, didn't burn less than the others. It was fun doing it, and so uh, I got the data I got, and I can't change it. Frank is doing a very interesting project. He's testing to see if electromagnetic radiation or just regular magnetic radiation affects algae cell growth. And he's tying this in to cancer cells and how we can maybe treat cancer in the future. My teacher first presented me the, the topic. She, she said that she was, she was interested in it. And so I thought about it and I talked to my parents because uh, they usually help me come up with a project idea as well. And my mom loved the idea because sh um, she was born near like a power plant type thing. And sh when she was like in, the, in her 20s, she uh, got a brain tumor. And uh, she's fine now, but that fascinated me 10 times more. The cells, we're going to put cells in this water right here. We're going to wrap this wire around this area. We're going to turn it on, and we're going to probably put it to 1.5 because this wire can't really hold it, hold too much electricity. And then we're going to measure the cell growth. And most likely, nothing's going to come from that. I mean, like, this is a ragtag setup right here. I mean, it's not, it's not a professional lab experiment. Uh, and so, you know, the data most likely is going to be normal, like nothing's going to, I mean, the magnetic field is most likely not going to affect it, but we'll see. He has to count that algae, and he had to research that, because I don't know how to do that. I'm not a biologist, and he had to go in and research what instruments he needed, how to do those counts, what units to use. I needed a couple of things for my science fair project that the school didn't have. I did not have a hemocytometer. Those were like $50 to $100, but I found a good, a good price for one. It has little grid patterns, like really small, and so when you look through a microscope, it has like little grids, and the cells are on the grids, and you have to count how many cells are in each grid. When I'm looking at, at it for that long, my eyes get tired, so it's very hard to focus. And so I just, I just take my phone, and I, I kind of have to like set it up perfectly. It takes me a few minutes and I just take a picture of the 4x4 grid. And my phone actually focuses better than my eyes do, so. When you do science fair, most of the students think it's like you have to come up with some crazy original idea to move on. But that's not true. I, I usually the judges just measure the professional level of your, of your project. If it's, if it's done really, really well, then they, they like that. You don't have to reinvent the wheel or, you know, cure cancer or anything like that. You, just, you have to, you know, do your project really well. And for those of you who are new to the science fair, there's a lot to look at. The students aren't the only ones working hard at this stage. Our teachers have to go to a meeting at the University of Arkansas, conducted by Ms. Lynn Hare. She's the director of the regional science fair. One thing I dislike about science fair, okay? You can write that down now, and I'll bet I can guess <laughs> <laughs> I, it's a four-letter word that starts with F. She's talking about forms. All the papers we have to fill out and get signed before we can even begin our experiment. I would say that's probably one of the biggest downfalls to science fair that I hear from students is doing all the paperwork. It is so much, but it is necessary because you've got to have the legal end of it covered. It's like a safety check, and it's daunting because you need a lot of signatures. You're going to have a supervisor, you're going to have a designated scientist, your parents have to sign off that this is what your project's all about. What about science fair? 
Alpine parents know a lot about the demands of science fair. And at the parent-teacher conferences, Mr. Welsh knows he'll be answering a lot of questions about it. We do get some of why they have to do this. They don't mind the process, they just wish it was not required of their child to do it. I think it's a good program, but I think that it should not be mandatory and it should not be such a huge grade in several classes. When they start feeling that frustration level, she will just kind of back off and quit putting some, as much effort into it as maybe she should. And then her grade starts to suffer because then she's not, her research suffers. I have a daughter that, that you know, excelled in everything. Science fair, she worked and worked and worked and never placed or anything. And it was very upsetting for her because she felt like she failed. Have all of you at different times felt like I put forth a really good effort and it didn't pay off for me? Yeah, sure. But I'm telling you this, past performance is not indicative of future results. And if we'll attack the process with some enthusiasm, then you will see a result that is nice. Your confidence is going to go up based upon what you find. Are there any good or bad numbers? No way. Explaining the why, that's the important part, all right, so you can't miss. Every science book that we have in the first chapter or two talks about the process of science. I don't ever teach those chapters. I don't have to because the children are doing it. Our ACT scores through the roof since we've been doing this. We went from below the state to above the national average on the ACT science reasoning part. So you guys are scientists. You're out there doing it. Most students at Alpena do the first science fair project in the fifth grade. If a tomato does better in the sunlight, like ripens better in the sunlight or in the darkness. What does better mean? and then how are you going to measure it? Mr. Rose is the middle school's teacher who gets the young one started. Science fair really adds a component to my classroom that I couldn't do without it because I get to do individualized teaching with each student on something they're specifically interested in. It may or may not, but we don't know, right? What's really fun is to watch, watch them discover something that they didn't think was going to happen. You know, the best projects I think are when their hypothesis is not supported by the data because that's why I tell them if, if you know what's going to happen before you do it, then what's the point of doing it? Okay. And immediately they start asking questions, you know, well, what if I did this, or what if I did that? Or, and I say, well, that's, that's something to think about for next year if you want to extend it. Good job, guys. Mr. Rose has some interesting experiments going on in his class this year. Desiree and Lydia love volleyball. They're working on a team project to find out what types of germs are on the school's volleyballs. They're testing to see if cleaning the balls with a disinfectant gets rid of the bacteria. And by Friday, you should have some results. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me get it. Dylan's grandma once told him to chew some gum to keep from yawning. He's testing to see if chewing gum affects the oxygen levels in the blood. He had no trouble finding volunteers for his study. And for his first science fair project, Denny really wanted to make a volcano. See what that so, Mr. Rose helped him set up a test to see which kind of vinegar reacts most violently with baking soda. Well, this is the easy part, because once you get your data collected, then the hard part begins. Yeah. Trying to figure out what does it mean. Most of the projects are done at home, and sometimes the parents have to help. Kyle and Weston love to hunt with their dads. They're using some instruments supplied by the school to test how firing a rifle affects the temperature and diameter of the gun barrel, as well as the speed and accuracy of the bullet. Ready. Give me a safety, hands off. Their dads are there to make sure it's safe. I think in God we trust, all others bring data, and these boys are out here taking measurements, getting data, they're learning. 17.87. There's no video game. This is this is us out here being real. It's, it's important to, that they feel that they're in control. They have decisions and they're free to explore. Well, I don't think it's going to be like we expected. Like, I think it's going to stay the same and it's not going to be much like we thought. Do you still learn something? Mm-hmm. What, yeah. what do you learn? We learn that we're not always right. 
Sometimes it's hard to tell what you're learning when you're in the middle of the experiment. You're collecting data, but what does it mean? As the school science fair approaches, you begin to realize that someone is going to have to explain the project to the judges, and that someone is you. I've had students come back and tell me, now, what, what did the judge say? And they said, well, they asked me an odd question. And I said, what's that? They said, they asked me if I had any uncontrolled variables in the project. But the judge asked them that, and they said, well, I didn't think I had any, so I told them I didn't have any, and I explained all the things I did to control it. And they didn't like that answer. So are you going we learned years ago from an opponent. A nice teacher from Little Rock Central came by after the awards at state and said, you know, your students do real nice work but they don't do one thing they really need to do. And I said, what is that, Ms. Dedman? And she said, they need to do data analysis. They need to use statistics to analyze their data. And um, I said, thank you. A year later, we went back to state and won a whole bunch of stuff because I studied up on the proper statistics to use for particular types of research. Calculating device out, I would like for you to calculate the standard error for the bee farm. If you're only looking at averages, you have no way of telling what the effect of the uncontrolled variables are on the outcome. You can't tell if that average would work out that way the next time or not. You have no way of evaluating the strength of your experimental design. So instead of saying, no, I think I had everything controlled, it's a very, very good idea to say, no, no, no. I tried very hard to control everything, but there were some things that were not controlled the way that I would like for them to be. Students will be called out of class 8th period today to pick up their science fair boards. When we send the orders out from the order of their display boards is when it really, for a bunch of them, it starts becoming real. I have paper, paper cutters, scissors, glue, tape, you name it. Your title is usually in the center with your materials and your methods and photographs and your graphs. Our teachers always remind us. If you don't really understand what you've done, you can't hide behind a beautiful board. As you can tell, I've, I've reused this board a couple times. So. And plus, it was actually my sister's before, so it's got her name on it. It's important because it's kind of an eye pleaser. And if everything looks really organized on the board, then the judges will think more highly of you and more highly of your data. I'm preparing for the actual day of science fair, so I'm starting to go over what I'm gonna say, have like what prepared what I need to say. You would wanna incorporate all of that into your presentation. Every year I like to give the students a chance to present in class before the science fair in front of me so that I can critique. And I took the temperature of what is a control group. It's like telling a story and you have to tell it right or else the judges are not going to understand what you did. How many times did you test this? I tested it, well I, I recorded the temperature three times each and like three times throughout the minute. I goodness gracious. I, uh... <laughs> you are going to be talking to someone who most likely does not know you. Three things matter. What you look like, what you know, and what your board looks like. Grab one and come this way. Oh. Uh -huh. Watch out. Yeah, uh, my name is Mark Welch. I'm a science teacher at Alpena High School. And we're going to have our science fair tomorrow, and we're going to have to we're feed several judges. And I was needing to order about 13 pizzas and get them delivered up here if, that, if you could get me a, a deal on that. There's a lot of prep that goes into it. Now we just need to assign judges. It took all day to, with three of us working on it to get the database set and to get all the judges assigned and to make all the labels and cards and judging sheets and clipboards and on and on. Every student has a specific place. They have a project number and they have to set their board up at that specific location. Tomorrow we are expecting close to 300 projects set up for the fair. So everyone stand up, grab your boards. The science fair is tomorrow and I'm nervous for the scholars. I want them to do really well. I want them to have fun. 
Chemistry, Lucinda Williams, right here. You will stand by your board and you will have at least two to three judges. They may come in pairs, they may come individually that will come and talk to you. So you may give your speech probably two or three times. The judge asks you a question. If you don't know the answer, say, I don't know. Don't try to make something up. Tell them the cool stuff. Tell them the stuff that didn't work. The hard part is over. You're done. You've got the project done now. You just need to relax and think about what you did. Tomorrow's the day. See how it goes. Okay, what category are you in? Set it up quick and get back down to the library, please. At the school science fair, we compete in categories against our friends and classmates. It's all new to the young ones, so they're excited. Some of the senior high students are just glad to get it done for their grade. But for those who want to advance and represent their school at the regional science fair, it starts here. This is our scrimmage. All right? This is where we pick out the talent. And I'm looking for one, what I call a starter. Old coach comes out in me there a little bit, but I'm looking for a starter in every category. When I'm thinking that way, what I'm meaning is that I feel like they're international type quality projects. Thank you first and foremost for coming. All right, we couldn't do this without you guys. Whatever grade level you are judging, it is extremely important. They're really excited about talking to you or maybe really nervous about talking to you. So the biggest thing today that they're learning in my mind is not necessarily the process of science, it's interview skills that you're gonna have to have to get a job sometime. Ask lots of questions. We wanna make sure that they did the experiment and uh, we don't want any made up data. So I want you to actually make sure that they did it. Give feedback, because we want them to improve their project. If they're moving on, we want them to improve it and uh, get that better. Oh, let me tell you that grades are not tied to the judging scores, so don't worry about that. You can be honest. It's not going to affect their grade any. Okay, keep the noise. You may talk quietly with one another, but keep the noise down. I'm bringing the judges in. My name is Chris. Hi, my name is Sophie. Nice to meet you. You too. So this is my project and what I did. It's something that they can feel proud of and that they've worked very hard on and it's and it's theirs. And what did you find? I found, well I thought that the newspaper in the earthworm soil was going to decompose quickest, but it didn't. They want to talk about it, they want to present, they want to tell you what they found out. What that basically means is I took 10 different fabric types. Gamma rays are wavelengths, they are the most dangerous form of radiation. But it makes sense to me that there was more plant nematodes in the litter because you put litter on, there's going to be more grass and stuff growing there. So generally there's probably going to be more plant nematodes because they have more vegetation there. Here's week two, this is the control group, much higher than the others and these show, this is showing the standard error which is calculated with the variance divided by the observations and taking the square root. Primary care doctors, they've taken out all latex, they're only nitrile, and your orthodontist and your dentist, they are only nitrile. So if latex is the best, yes, but because if so many people have allergies, nitrile, well, nitrile group. I really kind of expected either, either the electromagnetic field to be way up here, you know, with way more cells, or way down here because it killed all the cells. And so to see the control beat it and it be in between the magnetic field and the control, then that was interesting. It still needs refinement, but that's <laughs> just a suggestion. Uh, yeah. You have a lot of power when you're judging one of these. And so what you say can really turn someone's life around for the good, however you use it. There's something called a mass spectrometer um, that will actually separate on an atomic scale uh, um, all the atoms and test the percentages of each atom. It is. Do I think that it's a good thing that it's so competitive? I think it is good for the most part. I think it really depends on the person though. And someone that might not have the best GPA might do very well in a science fair. It exposes them to new things and can help draw them out of their shell. And finally, the third time it works. So. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah. I was actually I was impressed I was, about the the way yeah. that she measured flammability. I was like, hey, that's actually kind of an interesting way to measure. It. Yeah, we, yeah. Okay. And and for the future, she wanted to map out a grid. I participated in at least two science fairs that I know of. At the time, I really didn't grasp why I was doing it. I, I didn't understand the communication skills that were being developed at that point. Um, and looking back on it, I see that that really has helped um, me become the person who I am today um, and helped me be as successful as I have been in an electrical engineering degree. So eight or nine? nine. Medical science. Here's your first. That, that's well deserved. Your second. Okay. And then your third. Okay. Once the scores are tabulated, each school has its own way of announcing the winners. Congratulations to the following students. For Alma students hear their names called out by the principal on the school's intercom the same day as the fair. Again, students in the science fair, we need you to take your science fair boards down at this time. Now the chemistry department. We had one winner and that is Lucinda Williams. Haas Hall students wait until the next day for the winner's names to be revealed in class. JV and Walters, the level of harmful radiation from commonly used electronic devices. Way to go. At Alpena, we have an awards assembly, and it's a pretty big deal. The whole school is there, plus a lot of parents. It takes a lot to make this thing go. Mr. Welsh thanks all the community sponsors for helping with our expenses and hands out awards for the different categories. Bethany Young, first place overall. Winning an award at school science fair is nice, but the important thing is to place in your category and move on to the regional science fair. Thank you. That's a whole new ball game. We're the smallest school when we go to any of these competitions. There's not anyone there any smaller in number, but there's not one there any larger in heart and effort. We need to be really sharp. We'll be competing against students from other schools, and they only send their best projects. The judges are very helpful at the school fair, and so they told me um, some different things, some different pointers to work on my project, and so that's what, that's what I've been adding to it. And overall, it'll hopefully make my project stronger. So the bus is leaving at 6.30, okay? We really want to beat Alpina, that's our goal. We are extremely competitive. We like to win. And uh, when we go to regionals, we always love the rivalry against Alpena and Haas Hall. And you know how, like, how it wouldn't be as fun if we didn't have the competition oh, there. At Alpena, a lot of school's pride comes from our success at the regional science fair and beyond. Our classrooms have big posters of former students who made it to the International Science and Engineering Fair with maps showing the cool places they got to visit. The hallway is lined with awards and shadow boxes full of memories from the past trips to the International Fair. It's just to make it real to them. Tradition, yes, but more to convince them that it was something that was attainable. And you know, it gets commonplace because I walk down this hallway like three or four times a day, but if you stop and think about it, it's so impressive to think it's not just kids that are in like GT and in AP classes, it's everyone. It's really cool that it kind of draws us all together. 18 years we've been making this trip. Some of you guys are going for the first time. We've come back from this trip and others with awards 1,375 times. You need to believe in yourself. You have not earned this by accident. You earned it by hard work. The day of the regional science fair starts early for Alpena students. I've never seen a school that just like loads up on a bus and is pumped to go to a science fair, but uh, the people that go, you know, want to go. I'm excited. This is like my third year. We have nervous kids. We've got a little nervous in our stomach too. We load up the buses, we get to ride for an hour and a half, and then we get to unload and it's just a blur into the award ceremony. Toby. Here. Brianna. Here. 
Alma students arrive in style, but their buses are too big to park close. They have to carry their projects up the hill. Go around and look for that roommate. Someone will help you. Haas Hall Academy is in favor, so they come individually and join the organized chaos. Stick together and rock and roll. They've got their boards. Some have their parents with them. They're dressed up. They're meeting in the University of Arkansas Student Union. They're everywhere. You guys have done a nice job. Turn it loose here in a minute. Okay, Caleb Fritz. Once we have all the packets and where they're going to be judged, then we send them off to the ballroom to set up their projects. And that's when we as teachers go around to each and every student, making sure that they have everything that they need. Fabulous. Give them a pep talk and tell them they're going to do great. I forgot everything. You can do this. We've got this. We're all waiting for that nine o'clock time where they're set up, they're standing by their board, and the door is shut. Hi, I'm Devin. Nice to meet you. I'm from Alpena. My name is Brandon. <laughs> so, what did you learn from the project? That, well, the, that maybe it's like. Do you know what the p value is? The p value is oh. infinite by change. And the acid rain actually had much higher blood growth. When you took the control cell, was the amount of growth media and the number of cells the same as the remaining of the experimental? I'm sorry, I, I missed it. Like Devices, I, excuse me, I am so, so sorry. We're not getting radiation now, are we? <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> you're fine. Is 2.2 better than 2.3 or the other way around? I'm sorry, I'm picking on you. Yeah. Nice meeting you. Nice explaining this. Yeah. The judging lasts all morning until the final project is evaluated. Would you have access to historic data so you could have checked? While the judges confer, we talked to our teachers about yeah. how we think we did. Of course, they asked me some questions that I was like, I can't answer that because I don't know. Yeah. And wait for the room to be flipped for the award ceremony. You already kind of know what some of the kids feel like coming out of judging. So you already hurt a little bit for some. You hope for others. Child works 12, 14 weeks on something. You're rooting for them pretty hard. Middle division, overall school. They always begin with the youngest. Alpena Middle School. As we hoped, Mr. Rose's Alpena students win a lot of awards, including the trophy for best overall middle school. Uh, junior division overall, Haas Hall. I wanted it for my kids. I knew that they had done good science. I mean, you have your thoughts and your ideas of how you think it's going to play out. But in all reality, it is a surprise. And when you see their faces when their name is called, it's just amazing. The tension in the room seems to rise when senior high awards are announced. Three of us will be chosen to represent the region at the International Science and Engineering Fair. You have to win your category here to be eligible. From the Alpine side of the room, it seems like Alma's doing pretty good. Cole Bachman. I know who has put in the work and who deserves all of the recognition. It doesn't always turn out that way. Different outcomes can happen at the different levels of fairs. The second place overall winner is Caleb Fritz. <laughs> so when they called two of our kids to actually go to internationals, we were ecstatic. And so, we're down to the last slot for International. Is it possible that Alpine could be shut out this year? Time stands still before they call out the third name. Alpine High School. Brandon Crud. 
I cannot believe it. It's me, Brandon Kreiner, sophomore, Alpena High School. I'm going to the International Science and Engineering Fair. I am so happy for myself and everyone at my school, especially Mr. Watch. When you see a child and they're smiling on the stage where they just won an award at a regional or state event or maybe got to go to ICF or something like that, and they really didn't think that was possible, but now they realize that it is, and they feel a whole different way about themselves. That's payday right there. As excited as I am, I realize they always say the most important award for last, the trophy for the best overall high school. And the senior division overall school. This program was conceived by Dr. William F. McComas, the Parks Family Professor of Science Education at the University of Arkansas. It was produced in cooperation with the Lemke Department of Journalism at the University of Arkansas.